Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destination better. For today's video, we've surveyed natives, locals, and visitors of one friendly island to try and figure out the top 10 foods for Aruba. So real quick, before we start this video, I just want to give a very heartfelt shout out to two of my best friends, Brandon and Brittany, who are going to be getting married a little bit later this year and celebrating their honeymoon in Aruba. I wish nothing but the best for you guys. And I hope that this video helps you connect with your honeymoon destination better and helps you guys connect even more. Love you guys. Looking forward to the wedding. Let's get it. Starting off our list, the number 10 spot goes to the Barracuda. This saltwater fish is known for its large size, long body, predatory behaviors, and terrifying underbite. Taste-wise, they're described as being rich with flavor, with sweet undertones, a relatively high fishy taste, and a low fat content. The flesh has an off-white color that's dense and firm with large flakes. And one can find this fish prepared a number of different ways. They can be cooked as steaks with some sort of sauce. They might be cooked into a stew that's spiced up a little bit with some hot peppers. They can be healthily steamed, or they can be fried in some sort of flour, dredge, or batter. These guys are local here and generally live in shallower tropical or subtropical waters. And this definitely includes the coral reefs and seagrass beds of the Caribbean Sea. Check out some of the island's local sport fishing boats to catch your very own barracuda today. The number nine spot goes to Pan Bati. This flat pancake-like bread is native to Aruba and translates to smashed bread. And they're generally made with a combination of flour and cornmeal. So I'd imagine they would be similar to a combination of a good old flapjack and a johnny cake because of that presence of cornmeal. Visually, they're gonna resemble a thicker pancake that can be eaten in both sweet or savory settings. They can be served with breakfast or dessert with sugars, syrups, or different fruit preserves, or they can be eaten with fish or stews or really just any kind of accompaniment to lunch or dinner. Pan bati is a popular side dish no matter what you're eating. Now the history here is a little blurry and we couldn't really figure out a definitive reason as to why these guys are here. However, we do know that this dish is definitely a Reuben with strong Creole roots and a Spanish influence. Now, if you know anything about the history of Pan Bati, please let us know in the comments below. Number eight goes to Funchi. Funchi is a dish that's made with either white or yellow cornmeal and is extremely similar to polenta. It's made by cooking the cornmeal in salted boiling water, stirring it until it thickens up. It is then flavored with melted butter. And at this point, it can either be eaten straight up or pan fried for some extra browning flavor and crispiness. And it tastes just how it sounds. No frills, just cornmeal, butter, and salt. You would typically see funchi served on dinner plates as a substitute or rice or potatoes and is extremely popular on the ABC islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Now, I couldn't find too much on the history here, but due to its simplicity and ease of making, I'd imagine it's been around for a very long time. Corn was first grown in Aruba in 1500 BC. However, corn was initially cultivated in nearby South Mexico in 8000 BC, being followed by the production of cornmeal in 7000 BC. Now, I am assuming here, but Funchi may have been on the dinner plates of the Aruban people over 3,000 years ago after the cultivation of corn was brought to the island from Mexico. But this is not confirmed though and is a total guess on my part. But also, polenta was first made in Italy in 1550 AD, suspiciously after the Spanish found Aruba in 1499 and Mexico in 1519. Could Funchi have been the inspiration for the Italian polenta? And did the Spanish spread the word about Funchi after returning back to Europe? This makes me wonder. The number seven spot goes to Keshi Yena. This Dutch Antillean dish goes a little something like this. Spiced meat that's wrapped up in sliced Gouda cheese. Yum. 
Meanwhile, we're talking chicken, but it's flavored with ingredients like tomato, pickles, peppers, pepper sauces, stuffed olives, garlic, capers, raisins, mustards or ketchups, and different kinds of spices and herbs, just to name a few. And construction seems pretty fun here. Take any kind of bowl-shaped vessel and line the inside with slices of Gouda cheese, but remember to leave a little hanging on the sides there for some extra Gouda flappage for later. At this point, you're gonna fill in the cheese with your spiced meat mixture, fold those flaps over to encapsulate the chicken, and then either bake it or steam it. And what you're left with is some sort of Caribbean meat pie, where the crust isn't crust at all. It's a gooey, stringy, delicious wrap of Gouda cheese similar to the cheese that you would find on top of your favorite crock of French onion soup. Check out our link in the description below where we go over the top 10 foods of Paris, France to learn more. This dish is spicy, sweet, and incredibly satisfying due to the adequate amounts of cheese. Now, many believe that the creation of Keshiena should be attributed to African slaves that were brought over to the Dutch Antillean Islands sometime between the 17th and 18th century. The Dutch Antillean Islands include St. Martin, Curaçao, and Aruba. Theories suggest that slaves made this dish using table scraps, taking uneaten pieces of meat, spicing them up a little bit, and then cooking them in a finished, hollowed out cheese rind. And this dish would have been eaten by the slaves and was looked at as a let's use whatever we have access to kind of a plate. Number six goes to the Dutch pancake. There's not really any surprise as to what Dutch pancakes are. They're pancakes from the Netherlands. However, they are a little different than the pancakes that we're used to here in the United States. Dutch pancakes are typically thicker than a crepe, but definitely much thinner than what you're used to devouring at your local IHOP. Their batter can also be a little different, possibly containing things like buckwheat flour or cornmeal. Eaten plain, they do taste pretty similar though, unless they contain that buckwheat flour, which is gonna give different bitter and nutty notes. And Dutch pancakes can be topped with things like syrups, fresh fruit, whipped cream, rum, bananas, bacon, cheese, chives, but the list really goes on and on and on. This dish can also be eaten for either breakfast or dinner with sweeter options pretty much being exclusive to breakfast time. Now Aruba is a member of the Dutch Antilles Caribbean Island family. So it makes sense that when the Dutch moved from the Netherlands, they brought their different recipes and cooking traditions with them. The number five spot goes to the cocktail, the Brown Lady. Vodka, Bailey's, Kahlua, and Ponch Crema are blended together with ice until it thickens. Flavor-wise, I would anticipate some sort of creamy, coconut, coffee, nutty concoction that definitely packs a punch. But hold on a second. We know vodka, we know Kahlua, we know Bailey's, we know coconut cream, but what in the world is Ponch Crema? We're glad you asked, because we were curious too. Ponch crema is pretty much a Venezuelan version of your Christmas time eggnog. And Venezuela is just a coconut throw away from the island of Aruba. It's a cream-based liqueur that contains milk, eggs, rum, and sugar. But it can also be flavored with different things like cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, or lemon. Now the history of the brown lady is exceptionally blurry, and I couldn't find anything about its origins. So if you know of anything, the story behind it, please let us know in the comments below. But until then, I'll meet you down there so we can do some research. Cheers. Number four goes to pistachio. This is a half moon shaped hand pie that's extremely traditional to Aruba. They can be stuffed with beef, chicken, fish, cheese, vegetables, and can be further flavored with things like onions, raisins, different kinds of spices or peppers. Visually, they resemble the empanada and are closely related to them but there is one key differentiator here. Empanada can be made with a cornmeal-based crust. Pistachi, on the other hand, has to be made with a short crust. This is pretty much the crust that you would find on last Sunday's quiche or your Thanksgiving apple pie. And generally, they're served with ketchup, mustard, or chili paste for some accompanied dippage. 
These Aruban hand pies are generally enjoyed for breakfast and can easily be found via roadside snack bars throughout the island. Now, Aruba's Dutch influence gets a lot of recognition for the creation of Pistecci, but there are a few more players that deserve a lot more credit. The island's first inhabitants were a tribe from nearby Venezuela that were there sometime between 2500 BC and 1000 AD. Then, in 1499, the Spanish took control, followed by the Dutch in 1636. However, Africa deserves a big shout out here too. During these early European times, there was a small presence of African slavery on Aruba as well. So, if I had to presume, I would imagine that the taste of these guys is catered to the modern day tourists and the island's Dutch settlers, but is served in a cooking vessel and short crust that's believed to have come from Europe. And continuing my presumptions, I would imagine that these hand pies are being stuffed with ingredients that are native to Aruba, found in Venezuela, but being cooked with different African culinary techniques and twists. In conclusion, these guys are definitely 100% Aruban, but they're also a little African, Venezuelan, Dutch, and Spanish. The number three spot goes to the Aruba Ariba. But what is that? I'm glad you asked. The Aruba Ariba is an Aruba originated cocktail that's relatively similar to your classic rum punch. It's made with vodka, rum, creme de banana, and quiqui. I hope I'm saying that right. Quiqui is a local liqueur that's made from the juice from roasted agave, juice from the red flower of prickly pear, rum, and cane sugar. These spirits are then mixed with pineapple juice, orange juice, lemon juice, and grenadine. And although Grand Marnier is often used as a substitution for Quiqui, I definitely think that the original mixture is worth scouting out on the island. Let us know if you know where to get one. Now, the Aruba Ariba was first made in 1963 and was the product of a bartending tournament at the Aruba Caribbean Hotel. And ever since that competition, the Aruba Ariba has taken the island by storm. The number two spot goes to the Brewski brand, Balashi. The two most popular beers under the name are the flagship Balashi and Balashi Chill. The OG Balashi is a malty pilsner that's similar to a Corona and likewise served with lime. It boasts a rich golden color and has mild bitterness. Balashi Chill, on the other hand, is reminiscent of the OG but it's lighter, crisper, and easier to drink. And you can find both of these either bottled or on draft. Now, the brand was named after an 1899 Aruban gold mine. And you guessed it, the gold mine was called the Balashi Gold Mine. However, this mine was eventually closed in 1916. Then, in 1999, the first Balashi beer was made using the island's very much sought after water. And the beer is still made in Aruba, allowing locals, natives, and visitors to celebrate the island's economic heritage with every sip. The number one most recommended food to eat while on the island of Aruba goes to the Atlantic Goliath Grouper. These swimmers are distinguishable by their large mouth, stout bodies, and enormous size. The largest grouper measured in at 8.2 feet and weighed in at 363 pounds. Their diet typically consists of other fish, octopi, and crustaceans, which it eats whole. This fish is a beast. Many say that grouper has a very mild taste that's a combination of bass and halibut. Their flakes are chunky and often compared to crab meat. And one can indulge in the AGG a number of different ways. One can find it for both lunch or dinner, seared, blackened, inserted between two slices of bread as a sandwich, or even battered and deep fried. However, 
Although these are popular preparations, the people have spoken. The most recommended way to enjoy this fish is pan fried and encrusted with almonds. They call it almond grouper. The Atlantic Goliath can be found from Florida in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea and all the way down even to Brazil. They typically live around various reefs and wrecks where food sources are abundant. So they are pretty local to Aruba. But now, let's talk sustainability. The Atlantic Goliath grouper was classified as critically endangered in 2011 and just made its way up to vulnerable in 2021. So, although they are making a slow comeback, this species is still considered threatened. When in Aruba, we recommend limiting your grouper consumption to one plate per person per trip or foregoing it altogether. The oceans will thank you. So there you have it guys, the top 10 foods recommended by natives, locals, and visitors when in Aruba. If you enjoyed this video or got any value from it, please consider subscribing to our channel or dropping us a like down below. It's gonna help us out a lot as we continue building this content and growing our community. If you agree or disagree with any items on this dish, please let us know. If you know of anything that you think should be on this list, please let us know. Or if you know of any places to get any of these things, please let us know. We're all in this together and I'm sure that many others would appreciate your input to connect with Aruba better. But until next time, travel well.